So here is our timeline. So in this timeline, meron tayong date. Okay? So anyway, before we start with this, let, this, uh, let me give you a recap of what uh, dividends are aside, aside from they are earnings. So dividends, so they are, they come from retained earnings, okay? So ibig sabihin, sabi nga natin, sa mga nakapag-corporate accounting na, yung ating uh, mga kinikita when it comes to corporate business organization ay napupunta sa ating retained earnings. So kapag ginusto na no, ng board of directors na mag-declare ng dividend para kumita ang ating mga shareholder, so that is when they declare the dividends and dun lang sila pamibigay. But without the declaration of the dividends, there is no liability on the part of the company to give the shareholders dividends. Although, we have a rule, we have a law regarding uh, that na hindi tayo pwedeng magkaroon ng sobrang laking retained earnings. No? So, meron yan penalty. Pag din naman inipon natin at hindi natin ipinamigay. Okay? So, mapepenalty tayo or actually that's a tax. So, you call that improperly accumulated uh, earnings tax. Okay? So, background lang ako di yun. So, it comes from retained earnings and kanino nga ba pinibigay si dividends? Okay? So, balikan lang natin dati meron tayong diagram. We have the authorized capital that we have these unissued so ito yung mga hindi pa talaga na issued then we have the issued capital or the issued shares from the issued shares we have here the treasury shares and the outstanding shares what's the difference between the two treasury shares are share, shares which are held by corporation it's a or held by the company. When you say outstanding shares, these are shares held by shareholders. So these are shares which are already issued but are held by shareholders while treasury shares are those who are issued but were repurchased by the corporation. Hence, corporation only yung may hawak sa treasury share. So sa tingin ninyo, kung ikaw ay mamibigay ng kita ng corporation, kanina mo ay bibigay yung dividends or sino ang mamibigay ng dividend? Should all authorized shares be given dividends? Or pwede ba yung unissued shares bigyan na natin ng dividends? Of course, hindi. Eh. Hindi mo pa nga yun yung issue. So how come na mabibigyan mo siya ng dividends? No? Now, let's talk about this issue. So, ito ang laging kinakalito ng mga bata. Kanino nga ba dapat ibigay si dividends? Should it be given to the issued shares? So, it's given all shares na naka-issue. Or should it be given only to outstanding shares? On your point of view, sa tingin ninyo, kung ang company ay magbibigay ng kita sa kanilang mga shareholder, kailangan ba na mabigyan pati yung treasury share? Hmm. Diba? Kasi kung magbibigay tayo ng dividends, ibig sabihin, ipapapilalabas natin yung pera ng retained earnings natin or mag maglalabas tayo ng assets natin through uh, the retained earnings. Okay? So, kung halimbawa ikaw, si company, mamimigay halimbawa ng dividends, pag si company, Binigyan niya ng dividend si TS, kanina na makukunta yung income ni TS. Sino bang nag-hold yung TS? Si company. Ibig sabihin, para na lang sinabi na bigyan mo ako, babalik ko sa'yo, which is isang malaking katangahan. Tama? Hindi katulad, di ba? Pag sinabi mo si company, magbibigay siya ng pera, kay outstanding shares, sino bang may hawak na outstanding shares? Si shareholders, which is the purpose of the dividend. Para bigyan na income ang mga owner or yung mga shareholder. Ibig sabihin, these dividends, they are given only to outstanding shares and not issued shares. Kasi remember, TS is also issued share. Kaya kung bibigyan mo si TS, para mo sinabi na hey company, bigyan mo si TS, ibabalik sa iyo ni TS. Bakit? Kasi sa iyo si TS. 'Di ba? So ibig sabihin, si dividends ibibigay lang natin kay outstanding shares. 
Okay, so marami tayong klase ng dividends. We have cash. Kung halimbawa, walang cash yung company, pwede property. Pwede rin naman kung walang cash, wala rin property. Pwede rin naman na shares, no? So, yun ang mga klase ng ating dividends. So, minsan, pag wala, na, pag wala talaga, pero gusto ko lang maibigay na um, cash, So, sometimes, umabot sa point na talagang nagiging utang. So, yun tayo na form of script dividends. So, later on, makapalimuna ka ng the next videos. Okay? So, again, dividends, they are being given to outstanding shares only. Okay? So, if the shares, you are, uh, if the shares are not outstanding, kung sabihin, either nasa treasury yan, or hindi pa talaga na issue yung share, ibig sabihin, walang dividend na matatanggap. Okay, napunta na tayo dito sa sinasabi kong dividend gate. So, paano nga ba tayo nag-account ng dividend? Okay, so paano tayo nag-account ng dividend? So, we have three important dividend dates. The first one is the date of declaration. Okay? So, the date of the declaration from the, from the term, no? Date of declaration, it means This is the date when the board of directors declare that they will give a dividend. Next, we have what we call the date of record. Okay? And then we have the date of payment. Ibig sabihin, ito yung date kung kailan magbabayad na ng dividends na ipinangako niya si company. Okay? So, discuss na natin muna isa-isa. So, Pwede ba man na mauna ang date of record kaysa sa date of declaration? Definitely, hindi. Pwede bang mauna pa kaysa dito? Definitely, hindi. Pero pwede bang magsabay? Walang problema kung sasabay ang pag-uusapan natin. Huwag lang mauuna ito kaysa dito at ito kaysa dito. Kaya nga ako nagawa ng timeline. Ibig sabihin, ayan, dapat ang magiging pagkakasunod-sunod. So, anong sinasabi natin when it comes to dividend declaration? Pagka ang board of director ay nag-declare na ng dividend, na nagsabi na siya na, Hey, shareholders, I will give you part of the income of the company. And that, is, that will be true dividends. No? So that will be true dividends. Kapag kayo ay nag-declare na, ibig sabihin, yung company ay magkakaroon na ng obligation na magbigay ng dividend dun kay outstanding shareholders. Okay? So, sabi nga natin, no declaration of dividends, no declaration, no dividends. Ibig sabihin, kailan lang na-establish ang karapatan natin na maningil ng dividendo kapag nagaroon ng declaration. Maliwana. So, dito, ang na-establish natin ay yung karapatan na makareceive ng dividend. Ang tanong ngayon, sino-sino ang may karapatan na makareceive ng dividend? Nandun na ngayon yung tinatawag natin na date of record. So dito, sinasa tinataan na answer niya, sino ba dapat ang bibigyan ng dividend? And then sa date of payment, no? So syempre, ito na yung ito established na to niyan kung magkano ang babayaran natin. Dito niya ngayon ibibigay sa mga tao na nakalista sa date of record. So ano meron dito? Upon declaration, sabi ko nga sa inyo, Nagkakaroon na ng obligation si corporation na ibigay yung dividend kay outstanding shareholders. Which means, kung nandito ang right natin, ibig sabihin, si company on their part, dahil nagkaroon na sila ng obligation, kailangan na nilang mag-record. And that will be a debit to retained earnings, that is to decrease the retained earnings, because remember that dividends comes from retained earnings, although not in all cases, not absolute case, no? pero... Uh, dito talaga siya normally nang gagaling kasi meron tayong liquidating dividends na pwede mang galing sa ibang um, part, okay? Pero dito muna tayo sa normal na dividend income. So we have retained earnings. So babuasan natin siya. Let's say nag-declare tayo ng 1 peso dividend per outstanding share. Assuming we have 200,000 outstanding shares, so the retained earnings to be deducted will be 200,000. Tama? That is, magandang sabi ko, 1 peso per share. And there are 200,000 outstanding shares as of the date of declaration. Okay? 
Then, credit. So, dito muna tayo. Mag-example muna ako. Ang example muna natin dito ay cash dividends. So, it will be a liability on the part of the company. Am I right? Yes. Okay. So, we have credit. Cash dividends payable, 200,000. So, ano ngayon na mangyayari? Ma'am, sabi mo, sa date of declaration, hindi pa talaga alam sino-sino talaga ang dapat na maka-receive ng dividend. Eh, bakit mang dito pa lang may entry ka na? So, yung entry na to ay based sa detail na available as of sa date na to. Okay? Ibig sabihin, lahat ng may hawak ng 200,000 shares na to ay may karapatan ng ma-receive na piso. Kasi ang in-establish natin dito ay yung karapatan. So, in every right, there is an obligation na counterpart. No? So, right ni shareholder, obligation para kay corporation. Now, on the date of record, so tinitignan natin dyan, sino ba yung makaka-receive? Or kanino dapat ibigay yung dividend? Ibig sabihin, Kung halimbawa, sinabi niya, okay, lagay na natin na totoong date. Let's say, this is January 25, uh, 20, okay. This is January 20. On January 20, the board of directors decided to declare a 1 peso cash dividend per share. There, as of uh, this date, January 20, there are 200,000 outstanding shares. And sabi niya, lahat ng bibigyan ay yung mga shareholders as of ito yung nakalagay. The date of record, which is, let's say, April 30. Okay? So, lahat ng magiging shareholders hanggang sa April 30, kumbaga ito yung pinaka-deadline para makakuha ka ng dividend ay mabibigyan. So, ito yung deadline para mabigyan ka. So, at the end of April 30, kilala mo na talaga sino-sino yung pagbibigyan. Now, let us say, bumili ka dito. So, this is March 7. Assuming you bought 1,000 shares, are you gonna receive dividend? Makakareceive ka ba ng dividend? Yes. Bakit ka makakareceive ng dividend? Kasi lahat ng nakalista as of the date of record, which is April 30, mabibigyan na ng dividend. Tama? Sa April 30, pag gumawa ng listahan, kasama ka na ba sa shareholder? Kasama ka na. Bakit? Kasi April 30 pa maglilista. Kailan ka ba naging shareholder? March? Seven. Ibig sabihin, ikaw ay kasama na sa mag mabibigyan ng dividend. Nakukuha? Nakukuha po? Okay. So, assuming bumili ka ng April 29, iyo honor pa ba na ikaw ay makareceive ng dividend? Makakareceive ka pa ba ng dividend as of April 29? So, the answer is yes. Why? Because as of April 30, dun parang gagawin yung final na listahan sino ang makakareceive ng payment. Okay? So, yung bibilin mo before the date of record but after the date of declaration, ang ayan ay tinatawag natin na dividends on or dividend on. Okay? So, ayun yung tinatawag natin na dividend on. Ibig sabihin, bumili ka sa pagitan ng date of declaration at saka date of record. So, ang dividend on ay marireceive pa natin. Okay? So, as of the date of record, nakalista ka at the date of payment, kasama ka sa babayaran at bibigyan. Now, let's say for example, one day lang ang pagitan. On May 1, kahit Labor Day, tinry mo bumili. Okay? So, nung tinry mo bumili, bumili ng shares, 
Nakabili ka naman ng shares. Okay? So, halimbawa, nung, eight, nung May 1, nakabili ka ng shares, 500 shares. Pwede ka bang makahingi ng dividend? Hindi na. Kasi, nakalista na yung bibigyan ng dividend as of April 30. Hello! Okay? So, April 30, tapos na ang listahan. Kung May 1, bumili ka, o oh, kahit one day after lang yan, hindi ka na maisisingit. Kung halimbawa, ang date of payment ay August 31. Okay? Bumili ka ng August ng um, August 3. Bumili ka. Ng 10,000 shares. Ang dami. Ang dami mong binili. Sabi, ang dami ko nang binili. Bigyan niyo na ako ng dividends. Would you receive dividend? Would you receive dividend? Hindi na. Bakit? Kasi as of April 30, again, uulitin ko, final na yung listahan kung sino lang ang makaka-receive. Maliwanan. Okay. So, ayun yung sinasabi natin na important dates of dividend. Pero, buburin ko lang ng konti para magkaroon lang ng tayo ng konting kaliwanagan. So, again, kapag nasa gitna, ang tawag lang ay dividend on. So, paano naman kung halimbawa, nandito, sa gitna ng date of record at saka sa date, sa gitna ng date of record at date of payment. So, anong tawag dito sa mga shares na nabili na to? So, ang tawag natin dyan, No? Sa dividends na marireceive sana niyan Pero hindi na sila umabot sa date of record Ay X dividend Ibig sabihin X na wala ng kwenta okay? Maniwala ka X na ibig sabihin wala ng halaga Hindi mo na yan makukuha Nakalampas ka na sa chance Okay? So, yun yung tinatawag natin na X dividend. So, ulitin lang natin yung ating graph para mas maliwanan at uh, pumunt yung laman natin. Okay. So, ibabalik ko din yung mga yun guys. Ayusin ko lang yung diagram natin. Ah, ayaw mo bura. Pwede yung pagabura. Okay. So again, we have three dates. Anong dapat na mauna? We have the date of record. Ay, sorry. Date of, sorry, sorry. Date of declaration. Then we have the date of record and the date of payment. On the date of declaration, this is where you establish the rights and obligations. Pagdating ng date of record, this is where, this is when you establish who shall receive those rights. And on the date of payment, this will, this will be when the payment will be given to those who are listed as of the date of record. Anyone na nandito, meron na agad entry. So, on the date of declaration, nilalagay na agad natin ang entry. Magkano ang dapat natin, magkano ang estimated na ipapamigay natin. Okay? So, this is where you deduct the amount on the retained earnings. Then credit cash dividends payable. On the date of record, you determine who shall receive the dividends. So, ang tanong niyo sa akin ngayon, magpapano kapag gayong nandito, chinempuhan niya talaga na after mag-declare ng dividend, tsaka siya bumili. Eh di ma'am, nagaya niya yung company. Actually, hindi. No? Kasi yung mga shareholders as of this time, no? na nabili nila na hindi pa nila alam na meron ng dividends, mas mababa yung pagkakabili nila kaysa kapag meron ng dividends ang bawat share. Kasi di ba, at as of this date, lahat ng shares na i-issue, meron ng kasamang dividend. Tama ba? Lahat ng shares na may i-issue, hanggang 
Hanggat hindi natatapos yung date of record, meron na yung naka-attach na right to receive dividends. Am I right? So kung halimbawa, ang share mo dito ay selling at 10 pesos per share. Ang dividend na dineclare mo ay 1 peso per share. Okay? So dito, sa pagitan na to, ang bentahan na ng dividend ay magiging 11 pesos. So it is as if bumili ka ng share at binibili mo lang din yung dividend. Kaya, dahil 11 binayan mo, no, tama? Kasi nga, may naka-attach na eh. Lahat ng outstanding shares, meron nang naka-attach na right to receive dividend eh. So, as of the date of record, kasama ka. Tanga. Dahil kasama ka, ilalagay ka nila dito. Pero actually, yung ibibigay nila sa'yo, binili mo lang din. Binayaran mo lang din. Okay? So, sinatawag natin yun na dividends on or dividend on. Kung nandito ka naman sa pagitan nito, bumili, ang tawag na lang doon ay X dividend. Okay? So, wala nang dividend. Ito naman, may dividend, pero actually, binili mo lang din. Kaya, let's say, for example, so, dito, no, meron tayong 200K kanina, assuming meron tayong 200,000 outstanding shares. Okay? So, we have your 200,000. Then, may bumili na, let's say, 5,000 shares. Okay? So, dadagdag lang din natin yan. So, magiging magkano na ang ating RE? Tama? Then, pagdating dito, sa dito payment, babayaran lang natin. Paano ba tayo mag-debit ang mag- so, paano ba tayo magbayad ng liability? So, we debit cash dividends payable. For how much? 205,000. And credit, cash. Kasi babayaran na natin. Definitely, maglalabas tayo ng cash. So, in the amount of 205,000. So, paano naman kung ganito? Let us say, you are an outstanding shareholder as of the date of declaration. Pero kailangan, kailangan mong ibenta yung share mo because you need money. No? So you needed money. What you did, tinransfer mo yung uh, tinransfer mo yung binenta mo yung share mo sa ibang tao. So, sa inyong dami offering na yun. So, binenta mo sa ibang tao yung share mo. So, tinransfer mo. So, alam natin yan. No? In corporation, meron tayong Right of succession. Pwede natin i-transfer yung ating shares or yung ating rights even without the consent of everyone. It's unlike in partnership where in kailangan mag-consent lahat as in 100% ng partners before someone can become a partner. Pero pagdating dito, hindi. Okay? So pag binenta mo, dito, wala naman problema kasi as of the date of record, sino naman nakalista dito? Yung bagong owner na. So sa, sa kanya na, Dibilhin. Nagigets po? Okay? So, halimbawa ito. Kung, pa, kung ano, halimbawa may bumili dito. Or, at this day, binenta mo. Yung 200,000 outstanding shares mo, nabuwasan hindi. Hindi. Kasi nagbago lang naman ng, pa, ng pangalan yung owner. So, as of the date of record, kung naka-update naman na yung um, corporate books mo, then wala kang problema. Kung sino na yung bagong owner, yun na yung nakalista dito. Then sa kanya na, ibibigay yung dividends. Okay? So the date of payment, pabayaran na ng dividend. So the cash dividends payable will be 205,000 and the cash is 205,000 credit para mabayaran natin. Are you clear? Are we clear? Okay, so okay na tayo. We have dividends on and X dividends. So, 
practice lang tayo ng cash dividend. Total, sabi ko sa inyo, the topic for today. Although, this will be very, very short. No? So, this will be dividends. The introduction to dividends and the dividend dates, including the dividends on and the ex-dividend. Okay. So, kailan na i-establish ang right to receive dividends? Okay, as of the date of declaration. On the date of record, you determine who shall receive those dividends. And on the date of payment, so the dividends will be paid on to the rightful owners. Okay? So, do you want to So, declare. So, question. In which of the three dates, saan doon walang nagiging entry? Okay, always remember that thing. Laging hindi yan nawawala sa deptals at sa evals. Kailan hindi nagkakaroon ng journal entry? That is on the date of record. Because on the date of record, all you need to know is who shall be the recipients of the, of the dividends. Okay? So, assume Two pesos and fifty centavos per share. Cash dividend. Two eats. Outstanding shares. Shareholders. But there are the same one hundred. So it's all same shareholders. There are ten thousand. Outstanding shares as of this day. Okay? There are 10,000 outstanding shares. There are 10,000 outstanding shares as of date of declaration. Sabi ko na ako ito yung mayroon dito eh. Yung sumulat ko eh. Okay, as of the date of declaration. So, debit party. This will be the date of record. This is May 15, and on June 30, dividends were paid. Okay, so what should be the entry on April 4? On April 4, I, I mean April 10. On April 10, the entry should be retained earnings, how much? 25,000. Okay, 25,000 and credit. Twenty-five thousand. So the date of record, will there be any entry? Okay. No entry. So, on the date of payment, so the entry would be half dividends payable, 25,000, and credit cash, 25,000. So that's all for cash dividends. So that's all for the dividend declaration. So normal problem, syempre hindi ibibigay na ganyan na naka- paragraph type agad or outline type ibibigay niya let's say on April 10 the board of directors declared a 2 peso and 50 centavos per share cash dividend to its outstanding shareholders as of May 15 these dividends is were to be paid on June 30 then ito saan ito makikita ibibili sa inyo yung 
cut out portion ng ng um, shareholders equity. Okay? So, sa, try natin yung ganun. So, sa problems, ang makikita nyo ay hindi nakaganyan, of course. So, that will be very easy for the students na uh, answeran kapag ganyan. At syempre, hindi uso sa accounting ang, ang madali. Kaya pag madali, ibig sabihin nun, hindi makatotohanan. So, gawin natin yung ito ang makikita nyo sa libro. Parating na natin kung kaya i-analyze. Nawala. Ba't sabi nakikita ko naman? Sabi naman nakikita ko. Hindi nakikita sa lahat kasi sa akin nakikita ko pa. Okay. So, 
2010, no? so on September 6, 2020, the Board of Directors of BSE Corporation declared a 5 peso per share cash given to its outstanding shareholders as of November 15. This will be paid on November 16, 2020. So below is the shareholders' equity of BSE Corporation. So its ordinary share capital of 10 peso per is composed of 100,000 authorized shares, 50,000 of which are issued and 47,500 are outstanding. So that is a share capital of 500,000. Share premium is 720,000 and the retained earnings is 1.2 million. While the treasury shares is at 50,000, which is 2,500 at close. Okay. Nakikita ng iba? Okay, so September 6 here is what we call the date of declaration. When is the date of record? So the date of record is on November 15. And the date of payment is November 16. Okay? So what should be the entry on September 6? So on September 6, how many shares are entitled to receive dividends? Two minutes left. So, meron tayong outstanding shares. So, 47,500. So, 47,500 multiplied by 5 peso per share. The amount of retained earnings that should be debited is how much? How much? Two hundred. Okay, no? Two hundred. Forty-seven thousand five hundred multiplied by five. Two hundred thirty-seven thousand five hundred, if I'm not mistaken. Credit cash dividends payable two hundred thirty-seven thousand five hundred. Okay, on November fifteen, there will be no entry. Then on November 16, the entry would be cash dividends payable of 237,500 and credit cash of 237,500. Okay? Pagpuputol na. Okay, nakuha. Nakuha. So, that is the cash dividend. Actually, tapos na. 